<laughs> morning good afternoon good evening y'all welcome to the mental house okay listen you know it never ceases to amaze me that when i do tours uh, across southeastern wisconsin um and all the vast beautiful land that um you can just tell is native american territory i mean and some of the names of course give it away if you listening so let me first just welcome you to the mental house whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on uh, i call it the mental house because i don't know what's more crazier um the people that's supposed to be sane or the people that are using drugs and are in the mental house i have no idea okay uh up is down and down is up so when we begin to examine some of the things that i think are just insanity remember, remember i've come to the conclusion that we we planted all these narcissistic well we ain't do nothing these other people planted all of these seeds um that were narcissistic seeds and it has hurt them as well as us in fact it just really devastated us but it is um <coughs> It has brutally hurt them. So it's hurt really both of us, giving them a false narrative or a sense of who they really are. And they've been running on all of this um, delusional power or delusional set of thoughts of who they are. And so when reality begins to set in, <coughs> it doesn't look too well. Thus you have these Karens and Kens and Things of that nature, where at one point before the cameras, nobody ever challenged. But after COVID, everything's different. Everything's different after COVID. So it's important that we know that, right? So the first thing I wanted to do was, you know, even talk about the differences when you're touring this beautiful, like I said, vast, beautiful countryside of a state. <laughs> you quick come to find out that uh, in late country, it, they love to see uh, beautiful land and tourists, but what they fail to have the balance to is the gangsters that permeated Wisconsin in the 20s and the uh, 30s and how all those gangsters had hideaways right here in Wisconsin, right? So let me just read this little story to you and uh, see if you can, um, I mean, if you learn anything. How about that? In 1920, northern Wisconsin already was a playground for the people from Chicago. Because like I said, Chicago is just a hop, skip, and a jump. About an hour away, right? You got some cities here in Wisconsin that are further away, like Eau Claire and Cable. Uh, uh, I think Madison is like 45 minutes, so uh, that gives you kind of like a gauge to where Chicago is. I, it, it's going to merge because these cities are so close. Look at Gurney, Illinois, uh, and it's, it's Wisconsin, but it's Illinois. So anyway, let's move on. So when Prohibition flung open the door to organized crime, its remote takes and force became even more attractive to a certain kind of Chicago. Al Capone had a fortified summer home on a lake near Hayward. I go to Hayward, uh, fish a lot up there um, by Superior. Hop, step, and a jump. Now that's a, that's a pretty big uh, uh, stretch because that's up there by Minnesota. You're up on the Minnesota board, Superior. So this is where Al uh, Capone had a fortified summer home on the lake. His lieutenants frequented the saloons and brothels in Hurley. Rival Roger Tucci vacationed in Manaqua. I fish there all the time. Fishing with a machine gun in Manaqua. Isn't that something? For all you Manaquans out there. So by 1934, Prohibition was over, but the Depression was in full swing, and many people blamed the banks. 
Okay. So uh, you had John Dillinger, who was most wanted bank robber. He made a resort in Manitowoc waters. <laughs> it became famous when the FBI interrupted his stay there, killing a local, but allowing Dillinger, Babyface Nelson, and other men to escape. Manitowoc. The spectacularly botched raid of Little Bohemian Lodge is at the center of the 2009 film Public Enemy, starring Johnny Depp as Dillinger and Christian Bale as FBI agent Purvis, Melvin Purvis, you know, the G Man. It was filmed at Little Bohemian and around the Wisconsin area. Wisconsin is just beautiful and vast land for uh, areas for people that are shooting movies. And that's why a lot of them are being uh, reconsidered here. Like, uh, I think Bernie Mac did Mr. 3000 here. Uh, we were extras in that movie. Uh, Wisconsin is just really right. Uh, Milwaukee is, you know, as well, one of the major cities. Anyway, um, it's now... A tourist who are hot on the gangster's trail, not the FBI. Over the years, Little Bohemia has hosted throngs of what it calls bullet hole customers, named for the holes that can still be seen in the April 1934. Uh, the holes that I'm sorry, named for the holes that can still be seen. <laughs> Let me stop it right there. For the holes that can see can still be seen in the a bullet-ridden place. In April 1934, Dillinger had just been wounded in the shootout with the FBI in St. Paul. His girlfriend, Billy Frenchette, raised on Northeast Wisconsin's Menominee Indian Reservation, was in custody. So this girl was raised on the Indian Reservation. Like I said, this Indian area. All oh, vast. The, the Ho-Chunk, the Oneidas, the uh, 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 Shawnee, Kickapoo, Chickasaw, uh, what are the tribes? Kickapoo, Potawatomis. Potawatomis are here down in Milwaukee. We, um, Milwaukee. I mean, come on, you guys. Kenosha. I mean, it's got the Native American handprints all over it, and that's why it just baffles me. It baffles me when white men come in and talk about our land. It's like, dude, Y'all need to be trying to be humble in this land. Don't you know if we start relegating y'all back to a place that you need to go, you are wherever you are on the planet, you're not a native of none of them places. You either murder and rape and pillage the people in order to get that particular, but you're not a native anywhere on this earth. Uh, so well, I'm sorry. I, you know, so I don't want to you know, make this a bad scene, but it seems like somebody that got that kind of history will be more humble and stop claiming stuff that by far God didn't give you. You are an aberration to take these things and say and claim them as your own because if I did that to you right now, you put me in jail for it. And that's what I mean about the mental house. You see what I mean? The hypocrisy is just mind-boggling. Um, he and his gang, I'm talking about, uh, uh, um, Dillinger again, his girlfriend, he and his gang decided to get away and regroup. The owner of their favorite tavern in Chicago recommended a lodge in Wisconsin North Woods ran by a friend. Manor to wish, um, was a kind of a place where every little lake had at least one illegal still working overtime. Right, Brian Burrow, author of a 2004 book on which the film is based, Public Enemies, The World's Greatest Crime Wave, and The Birth of the FBI, 1933-1944. Nan Laporte used to run her brother's moonshine downstate, and that's where she met Emil Monaca. They married, and they ran a little bohemian bar in Chicago, a favorite of the underworld figures. And uh, before returning to her home in Manitowoc, 
1931, they built a roadhouse on Star Lake. All this area is frequented by a lot of uh, people that go fishing all the time. Uh, and it's really gangster paradise, really. When the party of 10 from Chicago showed up on a cold day in April, the Wanakas were happy for the business. But Emil recognized Dillinger and Nan eventually grew worried and told her sister, who ran a resort down the road with her husband, Henry Voss. So Voss called the FBI and drew a map of Little Bohemia for the agents. It's Failure to mention Nan Wanaka's two watchdogs was the was only one of many miscalculations. The gang had decided to leave early and was packing up when the dogs started barking. Nervous FBI agents opened fire on three customers who were leaving after dinner, killing one and wounding others. Dillinger now he jumped <laughs> out a window and ran unnoticed. Babyface Nelson ran another way, um, killed an FBI agent and wounded another one and a constable. He then stole their car. Meanwhile, FBI agent Melvin Purvis sat in the driveway until dawn thinking he had Dillinger trapped. In the film, however, Dillinger trades machine gun fire with agents uh, from inside the lodge and then is pursued through the woods. It's one of many discrepancies, of course, in this movie. But this is the real story that I'm giving you what happened. Okay. The escape was a national scandal. Embarrassing FBI Director A. J. Edgar Hoover. Um, the ensuing manhunt ended that summer when agents gunned down Dillinger outside of Biograph Theater in Chicago. The, bio, the Biograph. The gang had left many belongings at the Little Bohemian and after Dillinger's death, the lodge installed a museum. And for a while, John Dillinger's father and his sister ran the museum. Wow, ain't that something? No lodge no longer rents rooms. The lodge no longer rents rooms, but it operates a gift shop and restaurant. And the slogan is Dillinger only left because he had to. After the escape, gang member John Hamilton was shot by police from Hastings, Minnesota, as he, Homer Van Meter, and Dillinger headed for St. Paul. St. Paul. Tommy Carroll, who already had reached St. Paul, was killed in June by police in Waterloo, Iowa. Van Meter was killed that August by police in St. Paul. Babyface Nelson died that November in a shootout on the Illinois Highway. Wisconsin Northwoods remained popular with gangsters. Ralph Capone, a mob cashier who served more than two years for income tax evasion, bought a bar in Mercer and ran slot machines and was popular resident until his death in 1974. Sam Giacana brought his family to vacation in Rhinelander, so my friend, shout out. Wow. Shout out to um, my friends in Rhinelander. Royce. Uh, wow. Diane. All of y'all up there in Rhinelander. Beautiful place. Joe Salt has bought a lodge near winter. Jimmy Hoffa was a patron at Jack O'Lantern John. In Eagle River, that's somewhere we kind of stay away from. And the woods surrounding it were searched when he disappeared. Here are some of the places to visit on Wisconsin's Gangster Trail. In fact, if y'all want to check out Wisconsin's Gangster Trail. Um, and if you want a map, you can see Wisconsin's Gangster Tour Guide, which includes video tours, for more about historic resorts. Okay. And. Um, that's wild. All these places here. Are places that we frequent. The resorts. Manitou Wish Waters. Little Bohemian Lodge. Lodge. Lodge north of Minaqua. It serves as a traditional Northwoods. 
menu of steak and seafood is open daily and for dinner. It also serves as a breakfast every day except for Tuesday. Uh, a mile south is Voss Birchwood, Birchwood Lodge. Uh, Lake, Lake de Flambeau. Oh, they got some nice crappies up there, y'all. Lake Flambeau. Lake de Flambeau. Uh, Dillman's Bay Resort. In fact, up at Lake de Flambeau, after he killed an FBI agent, Carter Bomb, and stole his car in Little Bohemia, Babyface Nelson headed west. When the car threw a rod, he walked 20 miles through the forest and ended up in uh, Dillman's Bay Resort. He spent three nights in a maple sugar shack, now cabin five, with an elderly old Weeby couple, couple before stealing a car and heading to Chicago. Today, a fourth generation is running a resort on the peninsula of on White Sand Lake, 20 miles northwest of Manaqua. It is known for its creative art workshops held from May from mid-May to mid-October. Manaqua, the busy island city, was as popular with Chicagoans then as it is now. Wow. Hayward. Hayward is a beautiful place. I mean, it, 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 it's incredible. It's incredible. So I got to make this in, in, in two parts. I wish I didn't have to. But it looks like I'm going to have to. 